Hi, we're the Critides. I'm Wade Critides. I'm Sandy Critides. And to get to know us, we have to go back to the beginning. This is a good story. So this starts back in <laughs> Buckle up. back in 1989. Um, actually, it starts way before that. Yeah, true. So my dad and Wade's mom went to high school together in Wayland, Massachusetts. When was that? In the 70s? Probably 70s. I think it was in the 1970s. And then fast forward to 89. Our parents all found each other living like within miles of each other in across the country. Yeah. Yeah. In Laguna Niguel, California. And my mom was pregnant with me and Wade's mom was pregnant with him. Which is so crazy to me because like they went to high school on the East Coast. They end up on the West Coast randomly in the same town. Mm -hmm. And then our moms, are, our parents, you know, are pregnant with us. And we're born three weeks apart. Sandy's older, a little bit wiser. Mm -hmm. we've, we've, your whole life you've been a little wiser. So we're built in baby best friends, right? Where we were born three weeks apart. Our moms were best friends when we were pregnant. Uh, they were pregnant when we with were us pregnant. when they were pregnant <laughs> with us in the belly, and we just came out like baby best friends. And mm -hmm. we grew up in Orange County, California, first few years of our life, and we would you know play together and go to the park and the playground and the beach and all the things. Mm -hmm. And really, when we tell our story, people are like, "So have you guys been dating like your whole life?" And <laughs> the answer is no. We'll um, get to that. It's funny because. We always knew who each other were, but when Wade's family, when he was two, their family moved back to the East Coast. So I always knew who the Critties were, um, but we didn't really like know, know each other. Like I was close with his mom. She kind of was like an auntie to me, but it really wasn't until we were like in our early 20s, like 23-ish, mm -hmm. that we truly discovered each other. Yeah, so we grew up family friends, right? But we lived across the country. I lived in the Boston area. You lived in Orange County, California. And we would see each other maybe every year or two where we, our families would go on trips together. And the older we got, it was like, you know, say we're in high school, it's like, oh, my family friend's kind of cute, but we're, we're too close, we're family friends, like that's not okay. So we never expressed any of that. But secretly, I know we'd be playing like hide and seek with our younger siblings. And I remember you saying one time, you're like, she was hiding in the closet, like, I hope Wade finds me in here and like, maybe we share a kiss or something. <laughs> it's true. It's very embarrassing. Okay, what about this senior photo? Yeah, I was about to share that. I also remember doing spring cleaning. Like, it must have been, I'm trying to think, we graduated high school in 07, right? Yeah. So it must have been like 07, 08. And my mom's helping me clean out my desk and it's like freaking June or something. And I have the Critties family Christmas card from like eight months before. <laughs> and there's my graduation pick with my buddies. Was it? Something like that. Okay, yeah. I don't remember, but my mom's like, why is this in here? And I'm like, I don't know. It must've got stuck to something. But really I'm like, I literally stare at that picture every day because I thought you were so hot. <laughs> <laughs> so we had this like young kind of attraction or interest in each other but like mm -hmm. never expressed that we were just family friends but it was kind of like oh she's kind of cute and yeah it wasn't until oh, 10 years ago now but mm -hmm. um till our early 20s that we really came together and we say discovered each other and really ultimately fell in love yes so we're big believers that your mess can become your message and oftentimes like tragic things or hard things or things that maybe don't make sense in the moment lead you to something super magnificent and beautiful. And so at the time it didn't make sense. Sometimes I still think it doesn't make sense, but about 10 years ago um, at the time of this recording. So in, in 2013, my mom unexpectedly passed away and it was, it changed my whole life. It like changed everything. And so I quit my job. I had like a corporate job, I quit that. And I had a boyfriend for five years and I was like, I don't think this is the man for me. And my whole life was just super like up in shambles. And I'm like, I need to go be near women that loved my mom. Like I had this pull to connect and have maternal energy around me. And so I booked a flight to Boston to go be with Wade's mom and had an amazing time with her. And a big part of me being there was like, man, the thought of my mom not knowing who my future husband is, is devastating to me. Like, should I just stay with this guy? Cause she knew him and my mom, and his mom was like, honey, your mom would want you to be happy. Like if, he, if this person is not the person you need to, you need to cut ties. And I'm like, okay, you're right. That's like what I needed to hear. Well, a few days later, I was supposed to leave on a train that was scheduled to pick me up in Boston to head to Philly. That exact train that was supposed to pick me up crashed on its way to get me, which is crazy. And so I spent an extra four days there at Jen's house and Wade happened to be home. It was actually like Memorial Day weekend. Mm -hmm. And it was like- 2013 Memorial yeah. Day weekend. I'll never forget that weekend. And he was there at his mom's house. And that's really when we like, 
I, I ha had to stay extra few days. So like, mm. that's when we... Yeah, I remember my mom's like, honey, I'm working. I wasn't planning for you to stay. And I was like, I'm off. I had a corporate job in finance at the time. But, and I was like, I'll, I'll show you around. And so that was really when everything opened up for us in our relationship. And, and it was the first time we saw each other as like individuals adults and yeah. individuals not yeah like my family friend with her family it was mm -hmm. like us as adults connecting and so i remember it's a fragile time in your life i want to be there supportive i want to show you around and have fun and so i you know brought sandy around we hung out with my friends in boston we went to breweries we went shopping i remember we were in my car blasting country music which i wasn't into you were yet. not into it you eventually got me mm -hmm. into but i was into Kind of you in the moment and so i was just having a blast with it and i remember in those days i remember we i this specific moment we went to harvard stadium which is kind of classic like gladiator scene coliseum and we ran the stairs together and we were kind of stretching after and i'm like not a worker outer so <laughs> yeah. i was like working my ass off to try and impress you and yeah. you were like wow i can't believe you can keep up with me and i'm like fuck i'm I glad like, i impressed him i was like i can't believe you just did the whole stadium like that's legit <laughs> and we're stretching after and everything is totally respectful. Like Sandy did have a boyfriend. She was thinking about breaking up with at the time, but I wasn't trying to cross any lines or boundaries. And I remember just like stretching and just like looking at her and being like, I, that feeling, right? You know, if anyone's ever met their person, you're like, this is my person. But it wasn't necessarily the moment, right? To express that. And, but that feeling inside, I'm like, whoa, I just had this like inner knowing, like, this is my person. Like, this is my wife. But couldn't quite express it yet and and i, I had no idea he felt like that and yeah. i started growing curious where i'm like okay the fact that i'm curious and i want to like know his story and i feel chemistry is like solidifying that i absolutely need to break up with this guy that i'm like on the fence about and so it was like this crazy like turmoil inside mm -hmm. of me of just feeling i just remember feeling really sorry for myself in that time of my life mm -hmm. of being like man i just quit my job i'm unemployed um, my mother just passed away. I'm definitely going to be breaking up with this guy. And I weirdly am starting to feel like very curious about this guy who lives across the country. Like, why is all of this happening? I just felt so lost and mm -hmm. confused and like, honestly, like, sorry for myself. Yeah. And I think that's such a good, that's life, right? Like in the moment, oftentimes we don't understand why something's happening, especially if something hard happens in our life. And I really respect you and, and love, you know, how you look at that whole time in your life now but i remember that you eventually were going to visit your aunts in pennsylvania and so we got you on a bus and saw you off to to go visit your aunts and i remember those four days like i f fell in love and but you know didn't express that really but i felt this energy this like you were magnetic to me so i remember when sandy left on the bus I sent her what I now call a millennial love letter, but basically a text message. Back when text messages were only green. Yeah, yeah. It was like, like there wasn't old even the blue, school yeah. phones. Yeah. And so I remember just affirming her, like, I had such a great time with you. Like, you are magnetic. Like, you are just this bright light in the world. And, and affirming her, and just saying I had a great time with her. And at the end, I was like, all right, I got to shoot my shot too. And I was like... P.S. We should make a pact to get married one day. And I sent it and I remember just throwing my phone like, ah, oh, I did it. I did it. I don't know how she feels. We'll find out. But like five minutes later, I went to check it and apparently she felt kind of the same way I did. Yeah, I remember getting that text message very clearly. Um, it's crazy. When I got on that bus, it was like one of those moments in my life. It's like one of the, it's like out of a movie moment. I remember your mom dropping me off and it was like late May and it was pouring rain. And I'm like sitting in the window seat next to a stranger that I don't know. And I'm about to go on this nine hour bus ride. And I remember my head against the window and it's like cold glass and it's raining and she's standing there waving and I am smiling, but I just can feel like hot tears, like rolling down my face. And I just remember feeling like so sad about leaving. Like, I'm like, I don't want to leave. Like I want to stay here. Like this was a re this was really good for my soul. Like being here the past week. Um, and I just remember being like, what, what, what's next for me? Um, and I just like, remember that moment in time. It's like one of those few moments in my life that I feel like really stuck out to me of like, this has to be the end of this hard. Like, please tell me something like good is coming. So then a few hours later, when I got that text from you, I was like, whoa, like, <laughs> I really like the ending to this text. <laughs>
<laughs> um, but yeah, I just like remember it so, so, so clearly and feeling like, whoa, I didn't know he thought I was cute. Mm -hmm. I mean, I thought he was out of my league, but <laughs> if he thinks I'm cute, like yeah, maybe. Right. <laughs> so you guys were probably watching this thing and like, okay, you guys must have just like fallen in love right then and there and started dating and mm. gotten married and happily ever after. And that is not the story. We were like 23 at the time. Mm -hmm. I was just building my career. I just finished grad school. I was finishing grad school, I think like weeks later mm -hmm. and going into, I had a job in finance, like the beginning of your career, right? Anyone who's been there knows that. And I had worked actually really hard for that. And I was also young and 23 and I'm just getting out of school and I'm immature and like, I'm like, this is my wife, but I'm not quite ready for my wife yet. And she lives across the country and Sandy is more of a relationship person where she was ready to be like, all right, like you decided my prior relationship is not long term and like soon thereafter, like, okay, I'm ready. Like, let's start dating and get married. <laughs> and you would think we just got together right away and that wasn't it. I think for me, I knew I had growing up to do. I knew I had to become more mature to be your husband and to be the, the man that was right for you. And I had to grow into that. And I was also like, I can't just pick up and move to California and leave my career that I literally just started and got out of grad school for. So we had these years of growing and growing pains into a flourishing relationship. But I mean, I don't know. Yeah, it was like different. long distance. Yeah. And then at one point I got fed up with him because I'm like, are you going to commit to me <laughs> We'd or visit not? back and forth. Yeah, but we weren't like technically dating. It was like that in between when you're like, are we together? Are we not? Like, what, <laughs> what are we type of talk? Um, so I finally was like, all right. Like, and he would call me wifey, but like we weren't boyfriend and girlfriend. And I was like, I cannot with this weird stuff. I'm <laughs> so I get on Tinder. I get on Tinder. I'm like, I'm this is like years in. Yeah, right? I'm like, like, I'm shopping a year for a and boyfriend half later, maybe. Two I'm years. a relationship girl. Yeah. So I meet this guy on Tinder and we ended up dating for a year and a half. And, um, nice guy, but the whole time I just felt bad and like guilty that like my heart was with Wade. And so it was this awkward feeling of being like, oh, like I felt like my heart was like not in the right place. Yeah. I, don't know. I felt bad about it. And you think for me, I was like, oh my gosh, mm -hmm. she's has a boyfriend. I'm losing her. Like for some reason, I always just had this knowing that we no, were No, you weren't worried be. at all. No, I know. I don't know what <laughs> like, it is. kind of pissed me I off. I think when you know, you know, I just had this inner knowing like Sandy is my person. <laughs> like that's my wife. And I know we're going to be together and I know this is temporary or whatever. And so Eventually you broke up with that boyfriend and soon thereafter we were both kind of like more so you actually Sandy's usually the one to move first in the relationship like Absolutely. she's the visionary I'm the like, doer. like let's do this and I'm like oh yeah that's a good idea okay let's do it and then I'll come in and help execute but she was like all right here's what's gonna happen like I've done with that guy and we're meant to be together and I'm gonna move to Boston to experience your world for a year and then we're gonna move back to California together. And before then, we're getting official boyfriend, girlfriend. And I was like, yeah, that's a really good plan. For me, I'm like, yeah, what am I even waiting for? Like, you know, Because at this grown, point, we were flourished. like 27. It had been no, like, No, we were yeah. like 25, 26. No, no, 26, no. Yeah, it like had been like three and a half years since yeah. we discovered each other. Yeah. Like I was over it. I'm yeah, like, yeah. Let's go. And I was like, what? There's nothing else. Like, okay, I'm, I've grown, I'm, I, you know, a few years into my career. And I was like, okay. That's a good plan. So I remember you came out to Cape Cod. I asked you to be my girlfriend, summer of 2016. And soon thereafter, a few months later, actually, you moved to Boston with me. And it was always a temporary thing where we would sign a lease for a year and live in Boston. You'd see my world and, and my friends and family and everything. And then we'd move back to Orange County, California, which is where it all began and which is where you still lived at the time. And so, gosh, that was moving right in together and you coming from, you know, sunny, beautiful Orange County, California to Boston where you experienced four seasons and everything. I know that was a hard chapter for you. Mm-hmm. It was. Yeah. And so Sandy, I feel like really grew in that year a lot, but we grew together and I was in my comfort zone, right? I still my job, my friend group, my everything. We were moved in together. We were taking the next steps and the plan was always, okay, we'll live in Boston for a year and then we were going to go to Europe and then we were gonna move together to California. And so I realized I'm like, okay, I gotta put a ring on it, right? Like this is the next step. And I remember I got a ring from my Aunt Sally who designs engagement rings. And we are going to Switzerland, which is where Sandy's mom, that's her heritage, that's where she was born and raised. And we were going to 
you to show me Switzerland. I know she, you know, you guys planted a tree for there for her there and spread some of her ashes. So it was like really special place and I had never been. And we were going to visit there. I'm like, oh my gosh, what better, more perfect place than that? And so this is all I'm planning in my head. And so we, you know, we pack up everything in Boston to move to California. We ship it out and we fly off to Europe. And we were a week in Switzerland and a week in Croatia. And in Switzerland, we plan to go to Zermatt, which is where you can see the Matterhorn. It's like a world famous, unique mountain peak. And that's where you and your family had spread some of your mom's ashes and planted a tree for her. And you guys had an old picture of when you did it and then pictures of like kind of the tree getting bigger. So we're with your aunt and uncle and we're looking for kind of that spot so we can take a picture there and keep the, the you know, memory going. And I'm like, okay, this is it. This is that moment. I remember waking up that morning, butterflies. We're going up the gondola to get to the top of Zermatt and all the things. And we find the spot. And in finding the spots, like, oh my gosh, talk about butterflies. Like so nervous, but in the best way, like those nervous, but happy, good feeling butterflies. I feel like I need to interrupt you. Do it. So like two weeks before we went, I called my sister (laughs) and I was like, Tanya, I just had a dream that Wade's going to propose to me at the Matterhorn. And she was like, she knew she did know. Yeah. Yeah. She was like, San, don't make this about that. Like he's going to get to see the spot that we laid mom to rest. It's going to be special. Don't make it about anything else. I don't want you to be disappointed. She basically like talked me out of it and was like, that was a dream. This isn't like a premonition. I'm like, okay, you're right. So I kind of let it go. And I remember the week before we left for Europe, like, and I knew like when, when I, when we got engaged that his aunt Sally would make our, my ring because she's in the diamond industry, Mm -hmm. um, in New York city. So I'm like, oh, she's going to be our gal. And so like a week before we leave for Europe, he mentioned something like passively, but I think he think I didn't hear or something. So strategic. Yeah. And he was like, oh, I need to get Aunt Sally's number. And I'm like, (laughs) he doesn't have her number. And I'm sitting there like the ring by now. He doesn't have her number. I'm sitting there like, wait, we're about to go to Europe. I've moved across the country. I've sold my business. I've made all these sacrifices. I gave him a timeline that he better propose to me by the end of this year. Go get her. It's September and he doesn't have her number. So I was like, this is, so I was like annoyed. I'm like, does he just like have a screw loose? Like how long does it take to like get this through? So that's where I was at. So like I, I had had thoughts about it happening, but I really did not know that it was happening. Yeah. So it was, I had this plan in the works. I even had the ring in our apartment in Boston, which is in the city in a skyscraper, not a big apartment. I'm like so nervous, like where to hide it and how to keep it safe for like three months leading up. Yeah. Oh man. That was like a good nervous, but again, nervous. And so we find the spot back, back to the story. We find the spot. Sandy, meanwhile, thought it might happen, but has no idea. Didn't the night before you had the, the dream? The, no, the night before, no, the morning of, I remember looking at my hand oh, yes. without a ring on it and having this moment of thought, this is the last time I'm looking at my hand without a ring on it. Sandy's very intuitive, gets these good And then feelings. I was like, Sandy, stop, stop come putting on. putting pressure on it. Don't put pressure. Okay, <laughs> we're going up the gondola, let's go. Mm-hmm. Like, it was like a second of a thought, but like it was there, it kept creeping in, but yeah. then I was like, don't get your hopes up. So then we're looking at the Polaroid picture to find the spot where they planted the tree for her mom. And we find it and we're with your aunt and uncle and they're in on the plan. Cause the night before we went to dinner, when Sandy goes to the bathroom, I'm like, all right guys, look, I'm going to propose tomorrow. We're going to go to the Matterhorn. I, can you get a white rose? Can you get Swiss chocolates? Can you, and then when I'm going to ask to take a picture and when that happens, I'm going to get down one knee. And so, they were like, cool. They're like, oh, cool. And then Sandy <laughs> comes back and I'm like, play cool. And we're like, Oh, how's uh, your rosti, uh, Sandy? <laughs> how's your potatoes? Um, but anyways, we get there and we find the spot. And I'm like, hey, will you take a picture? Drop down on one knee and propose. And I'll obviously never forget that moment. And I had kind of scripted something, how I wanted to propose. I don't know how, because I, I blacked out, but I somehow remembered it. Um, <laughs> and I remember what happened as soon as I proposed and I put the ring on. You were oh. like overwhelmed with joy and tears and happiness and the, the Matterhorns in the background. And it's just this beautiful scenery. It's a blue bird, like blue sky, sunny day. I, everything's perfect. You mean when you open the box? Yeah. Okay. Well, my eyes were so full of water. This sounds so terrible, but this is just what, <laughs> this is true. She's just hilarious. I looked at it and was like, 
I mean, he got me a speck, but... Called it a speck ring he per- in her head. He proposed. Like, I didn't say that out loud, but I'm thinking it looked like it... It looked like a crumb. Like, it looked like <laughs> the tiniest diamond ever. Nothing wrong with, with Which is that. fine, yeah. but, I, but I told him, I'm like, if if we're going to do this, like, I would love to have, like, I told him like what I wanted. And not like a gaudy wanted. ring, but yeah, no. yeah. So anyway, she thought it was a quote-unquote speck. Anyways, <laughs> later on, she's like, oh, it's actually, like, it's pretty, pretty big. Okay. <laughs> But um, I also, Terrible. I remember I wrote Sandy's mom, Yulia, a letter basically kind of asking Yulia for Sandy's hand and that making sure she knew that I was going to take care of her and protect her and guide her and all the things. And she was my delicate flower, I think I referred to you as. And like just saying like, hey, don't worry, she's in good hands. And I remember reading that letter and that was just, gosh, such a, I have chills, like, one of those moments in life that you won't forget. And so just such a beautiful day. I remember we rode scooters back down and we stopped for, for uh, lunch on the halfway down the mountain looking at the Matterhorn with your aunt and uncle and it was just so beautiful. And then we're engaged. And then it's time to, we went to Croatia after and it's time to move back to California together. We moved to Laguna Beach and at the time, gosh, we should probably segue into, we were, you know, Months from getting married, we moved back to California. Or no, we were a year from getting married. And um, kind of at this transition point in our life, we're like, all right, now we're engaged. You start to think about and talk about our life together. Um, We both had jobs where we were working for other people. I had uh, my master's degree in finance, and I was like, I got to go into finance and climb the ladder there. And that's what I had done. And you were more entrepreneurial and kind of looking for your passion. But I feel like this is a good opportunity to segue into kind of our career path from there. Yeah, so back, like, if you rewind, you know, right around the time when Wade and I discovered each other, when I quit my job, I was, that's when my entrepreneurial journey started, Mm -hmm. that same year. Like, so much of my life changed. So, 2013, I was like, okay, I'm meant to be my own boss. I've literally known this my entire life. Like, I am like, I am the lemonade stand queen. I am like the, all the things as a kid. Like, I was always looking for ways to make money, be creative, wasn't afraid to work hard, but wanted to work hard, like doing my own thing. And so um, I was unemployed for like eight or nine months as I was trying to figure out like what my thing is. And with the help of my dad, um, I actually hired a franchise consultant that did like all these questionnaires and personality assessments and like strength finders type thing to figure out like what my strengths are and ended up like narrowing it down to I felt like at the time being 23 that I wasn't like smart enough or skilled enough to start my own business so it felt safe to purchase a franchise something that had um you know like a system for success had been around for years had a good reputation something that I could buy into where I'd have support um but not like completely on my own Mm -hmm. so I found a juice bar in San Clemente, California that had been there for 10 years and the owner was selling it. And I'm like, wow, it's right across from the high school. It's been around for a long time. Like it definitely needs to be like revamped and revived and I could be the person that brings it life. And so um, I got a loan and my dad helped me and we purchased this juice bar and I owned that for around four years. So as Wade and I were doing this like long distance, awkward, are we together, are we not? That whole time frame leading up to me moving to Boston was when I owned that brick and mortar. So as you know, Wade's starting his career in finance, I'm starting my career as an entrepreneur and you know running a like a physical store is mm-hmm. what I was doing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and so right around that same time, yeah, my my story quickly goes back to I grew up with a lot of love in my family and all the things, but for me, my personal experience was like there was a lack of money, and so growing up, I was like who makes money because I thought money was like a missing link, right? And okay, businessmen do. All right, who makes money businessmen? Okay, I gotta go to business school. What do I have to do to do that? I have to get good enough grades to go to business school and then I'll go into business. So that's what I did and I played sports, you know, growing up and I worked hard enough to get good enough grades to go to business school. I went to Bentley University in the Boston area and I was like, all right, accounting is boring for me. Finance, okay, these finance, these Wall Street guys make a lot of money, let me do that. And so I got my master's degree in finance while playing football. And you come out with your master's in finance, you're like, I better go into the finance world. So I went into the finance world, kind of Wall Street type work, but in Boston. And just with the thought of I'm gonna climb the ladder until I make six figures, and when I make six figures, everything's set. You're just fulfilled, everything is good in life. 
And so I put my head down, I climbed the ladder, and a few years in I realized, whoa, I've made it to the point I set out to go to, where I thought was the pinnacle, right? Where everything would be good, including fulfillment. And I've always been a happy, positive guy. I did not hate my job. It was, it was okay. And I, on paper, it looked great, right? I was successful, I had my master's, I was making a six-figure income in finance, I lived in the nice apartment and the car and all the things. But on the inside, I was like, huh, I'm not fulfilled though. Like, there's gotta be more to life than this. I'm just, you know, showing up to work in a job that I don't particularly love and working for someone else's equity for their dream, for their vision, for their business. They kind of tell me when I have to be at work, nine to five, actually longer than that. Sometimes I work weekends and I'm basically waiting for the weekend and I'm waiting for my two weeks vacation. And I started to realize like, this isn't the life that I personally want to live. And there's nothing wrong with that. Being an employee or working in a corporate setting. But for me, I realized that wasn't it. And then I would see people like Sandy. And I remember when we moved to California, I started to work remote for the same job in California. And I started to see people's lives that I admired. And they, long story short, they were entrepreneurs and business owners. And they had a level of freedom that I didn't have. Now, they probably worked harder than me. They might have even worked longer hours than I did. But it was on their own terms and it was around their lifestyle. And it was for something they were passionate about. So I remember seeing Sandy kind of bounce between things, looking for something she could be entrepreneurial in and be her own boss and something she's passionate about. And I always admired and respected that in her. And you kind of, from the outside looking in, I remember when you had your juice shop, I'd be like, it's a Wednesday and she's at the beach? Little did I know on Sundays when the point of sale machine is broken and you gotta go in at 5 a.m. to fix it or the freezer breaks, there's all sorts of other things within entrepreneurship, but I remember I admired that so much. So I started to think, I've gotta get out of finance. I didn't see the it in the long term. Like 10 years from now, I know where I'll be in this job and it's not the life that I want. It's a fine life, but it's not what I want. So I started to lean into how do I become a business owner and entrepreneur? And I really always look to you for advice in that and, and just for, for vision in that. Because whatever Sandy did, I'm like, I could do that with you. We could do it together. I always had this vision of us working together. And I remember when you eventually got into business brokerage and real estate, I was like, I could learn that. We could be business brokers together. Yeah, when I had my juice bar, you were like, we could have 10 of these. That's right. And then when I got into real estate, you're like, we could be the power couple that like sells businesses together and all over Orange County in California. Mm -hmm. And then when I got over that, now we do what we do You together. just follow your heart. Yes. Yeah, and you were like, oh, man, I remember that. Yeah, so when we moved back to California, um, you know, we were what, 29? Mm -hmm. We're 29 years old. We're living rent free at my dad's condo. On the beach. In on Laguna. the beach. It was beautiful. Um, and I was trying to figure out what my next move was. I'm like, okay, I sold my business to go move across the country. That year in Boston, I was waiting tables. I was nannying. I worked for a software sales company. I was bouncing around to every odd job for the software sales company. I had to do 175 cold calls a day. It was like literally a low point. I'm so grateful for it because it like, showed me like what I do not want, right? But I w felt very like confused and um, unfulfilled, to be honest. So when we moved back to California, I'm like, okay, what's my thing? I'm 29 and I need to figure out my thing. I've been an entrepreneur. I've owned my own business. I know I'm not afraid to work hard. I have to figure out what my thing is, right? And so the gentleman that had helped me sell my juice bar was like, Sandy, you should get your real estate license and you can come work for my firm and I'll, you can shadow me and I'll show you all the things. And so I've never been one to be like extremely studious or really great at test taking or studying or any of those things. So I actually started to study for that real estate test when we still lived in Boston. I took the test, I failed it. I took it again, I failed it. Then we moved to California, I took it again and I failed it. And then finally, I think the third or fourth time I passed it and I was like, wow, <laughs> so embarrassed. But I was like, okay, I finally freaking did it. And so then I'm a licensed real estate agent and I start working under this gentleman, not doing residential. I was doing, focusing more on businesses, helping business owners change hands. Um, and I, I had been doing that maybe seven, eight months. And you know, it can be very lucrative and it can be amazing. And I'd honestly only ever sold a couple of businesses with a lot of his assistance until I got introduced to what we do now in network marketing. Mm -hmm. And I remember, yeah, I'm, I'm trying to become an entrepreneur. Sandy's not, if she's not passionate about something, she's not long on it and she's going to figure out her next step and her next move. And we always say when you're seeking something, it's seeking you. And I remember I wanted to become an entrepreneur 
And I actually hired a business coach because I'm like, you, can you help me start a business? I want to own my own business. I want to be my own boss. So I hired this coach right around the same time you got introduced to a network marketing opportunity and you started you know, to go through healthy living programs and really feel good from the products and everything. And so I'm seeking to be my own boss and start my own business and become an entrepreneur. Sandy's seeking something she can be super passionate about. We're, we're kind of, and I'm also seeking like I want to work with her. I don't know if she felt the same way, but we were seeking. We had a good life, but we knew there was more and we knew we were meant for more. And I remember feeling like there was a sleeping giant inside of mm. me that needed to be expressed. Like mm-hmm. I remember when I owned my juice bar, it was an 813 square foot space. And I remember I'd stand in there and I'd like look out the windows of this small shop and I'm like, I am made for something so much bigger than this 813 square foot space. Like I am meant to have a global impact. I'm meant to help people in different corners of the world. Like I can't do that when I'm confined to this physical brick and mortar. I need to be involved in something that allows me to reach more people. I need to be involved in something like e-commerce or something that like connects my heart to other people's hearts and I didn't know how to do that. And then when I branched into real estate, it gave me more opportunity, but it still only limited me to California. And I'm like, "Mm, I still feel confined. Like I wanna find a way that I can make a big impact and help people and just connect to people with no geographical territories. Mm -hmm. And I remember Sandy was always like, Oh, she was, oh, I give you so much credit because she was always passionate about like, I'm going to find my thing. I don't know what it is yet, but I'm going to find it and may do and even did well through that whole journey. And you had highs and lows and you owned your own business. And then there's a point you're in Boston with me and we were only there for a year. So it was part time. So she's like, I'm just going to take a part time, you know, serving job and whatever. She goes, gosh, I just own my own business. Now I'm doing 175 cold calls a day and, and I remember your salary was like 40,000 a year or something and then waiting yeah. tables at night and certain things you're like I'm meant for more than this and like you got to go through the lows to feel the highs too right and I remember I felt the same way where I felt like I was made for more I'm sitting at a desk nothing wrong with that but I'm not making an impact in people's lives like I'm not expressing my truest expression of myself and my gifts and how I can help and serve the world didn't know what it was but was seeking it and so I remember your sister, like it really starts with your sister, right? Our, our entrepreneurial journey mm-hmm. together starts with your sister. Yeah, my sister's my best friend, Tanya. She had incredible results with this 30-day like gut health program through the company that we work with, Arbon. And I watched it transform her health and help her tremendously. And I thought, wow, if this could do this for you, like I wonder what it could do for me. We're getting married in a few months, like for super, super official reasons, I was like, I want to do that program because I want to look bomb in my wedding dress. I had no intention of ever, ever, ever doing the business. I just wanted to be a customer. Um, So I tried the products and I remember them transforming my health and feeling like alive for the first time in a long time. I remember waking up on day 10 of the program and feeling this like renewal, this like revival of my soul. Like I woke up before my alarm, which I was like, that's weird. I never do that. And then like the next day, the next day, I'm like, am I becoming a morning person? I start like meditating. I start doing affirmations. (laughs) I start like reading. I was like, what's happening to me? Like I'm transforming from the inside out. This is so amazing. Like, and the only thing I've changed is like just being more mindful of what I'm putting in and on my body. Like this is kind of crazy. And people start noticing, people start asking me like, dude, what are you doing? Like past couple of weeks, like there's been a shift in you. And I started noticing like my sleep was better. My mood was better. I, I've my in my life been a very anxious person. I used to have like severe panic attacks and like I used to like let my emotions like boil over and like completely take control. And I started feeling like more calm and my skin started clearing. I started like, I had really bad eczema on the backs of my arms and I'd get like random like rashes and stuff on my face that I'd have to go to dermatologists for and get like steroid creams and topical medicated creams and blah, blah, blah. And my skin started clearing and my clothes started fitting better. And I just honestly started feeling like hope and good. And the only thing I had changed was doing this program. And so people were like, what are you doing? And I'm like, oh yeah, I'm doing this Arbonne thing. And people were like, do you sell it? I'm like, no, I have a real job. I'm in real estate. I would, I would never do anything like that. And I was like saying no to it for like two months. And I'm sending people to my sister and my sister's like, San, you're literally a walking billboard. Like you love this stuff. This is so authentic to you. Why won't you do this? And when I really like tapped in, it was cause I was scared. Like I was like terrified. I'm like, what if I do this and I'm not good at it? What if it's just another thing that Sandy has tried and people will be like, told you so those things don't work. So I was like really scared of judgment and like fear of failure. Yeah. Well, what will people think of me? I think mm-hmm. that's probably all 
one of our biggest fears in life. And I remember I saw this new fire and passion in Sandy. She was always a passionate person, all the things, right? But she started to get healthier. She started to like feel good from the inside out. And it was just a magnetism, right? She was, she was vibrant. And I remember one day she comes home from an event, this, this Arbonne event. And she's like, pulls me out. We're on vacation in Mission Bay, San Diego. Pulls me out to the pool. I'll never forget this day either. And is like, babe, do you trust me? I was like, of course I do. She goes, I'm going to change our family's life forever. And we were a family of two at that point. We were married. Uh, or no, we were a few get months married. from getting married. Didn't have any babies yet. And I was like, that's awesome. How? And she goes, I want to do this network marketing, this Arbonne opportunity but I wanna take a look at it together. I wanna to look at the business plan, the compensation plan, all the things, I'll look at it, you look at it with your finance background. And if we both think this is smart, I'm going all in on it. And I was like, all right, cool, sounds good. And I grew up in Boston, I grew up in the finance world. I didn't know anyone or I had never been approached by anyone about network marketing, so I had no preconceived notions. And I remember just looking at the business plan with you, being like, this is really smart. It's like turnkey entrepreneurship. You've bought a business before for hundreds of thousands of dollars. This is like a few hundred to get started. And that's the whole risk. And there's only upside from there. Like you could be profitable on day one or week one, but it's efforts based. It's whatever you're willing to do and work for. Now, the other cool part is there's built in systems for success and built in mentorship. And you get all that for free. And, but this will be whatever you make of it. And there's no cap on income or your impact. Like, but you'll get paid as big as your impact is. Um, and you just, I remember when we looked at it together, we got all of our questions answered. Mm -hmm. You just took it and ran with it. You were this unstoppable train. Well, I'm really big on signs. And mm. the day before that, so I had had this tug on my heart like for a couple months. Like I'd been using the products for a couple months. I was feeling amazing. I'd been invited to several Arbonne events. I was going to healthy happy hours. I was meeting people in the community. And I'm like, man, I have never met so many women that are like positive and high vibe and empowering and like it's not competitive it's like fully like an uplifting culture and i'm like i love being around these people but like i could never like i would never actually like do the business right and so i was like very judgmental of it and like but i also was like so intrigued by it and so i remember you know a couple months into using the products I, a couple of ladies in the business had told me like you'd be really good at this and i'm like oh thank you like no i have a real job um and i would kind of like poo poo it right but i saw the way that they lived and i'm like wow these women are present moms they have two three four five kids like they don't miss any field trips they drop their kids off at school like they're very present moms but they also are incredible leaders and they also have an identity outside of motherhood and they also are providing for their families and i'm like that is really attractive lifestyle to me they're, they don't work nights or weekends or holidays like I was in real estate or like I have in hospitality or in other things. Like they get to choose when they work and they get to make a big impact and they get to be their own boss and they travel a ton and they're getting, you know, paid based off of their impact. And to me, I was super intrigued by that. I'm like, if I help no people, I will make no money. And that's what I deserve. But if I help a lot of people and if I make this business about focusing on others and solving their pain points, then rightfully so, I can earn an incredible living for my family. And so to me, I was very driven by that efforts-based business model where I'm like, I'm not afraid to work hard. Like I will, this won't be a fit for a lot of people and that's totally fine, but there's people out there that are praying for this and I'm gonna find those people. And so to me, it was like super inspiring of like, this could be the thing for me. But I was so scared to like actually say it or admit it out loud. I think almost cause I was like afraid of my potential. Mm. Like I was like, if I do this, like this is gonna change our family's life. Like yeah. this is gonna be like, no one's gonna have ever seen something like this. Like, I don't know. So I asked my mom, I remember this so clearly, it was August 3rd of 2018. Remember, my mom has passed away. And I asked her out loud, I said, mom, if I'm meant to do this, please give me a clear sign. If I'm meant to do this Arbonne opportunity and I'm gonna change thousands of people's lives, please give me a clear sign. Now, for some reason, there's something about a white rose that is like so pure and tender and just reminds you of my mom. It's something that's just, it's a sign. Whenever I see a white rose, I know that my mom is with me. I could give you a million examples of different things that have happened that make the white rose so significant, but I'll save that. So that day, fast forward to the next day, August mm -hmm. 4th, the day that I came to Wade and said like, 
I'm going to do this. I had been at this conference, this all day thing with my sister. And I skeptically went to be like, let me go see like what <laughs> business you're getting into. And by the end of it, I'm like a changed woman, right? But I remember they had this like tunnel. All these women were doing this tunnel and you like, it was the end of the day and they had music playing and like people were running through. And when I came out of the tunnel, I was handed a white rose. And I got like chills all over my body because I felt like it was my mom being like, Sandy, this is the thing. And so that was like what I needed. And so I had no idea how I was going to do it. I was terrified, but I knew like I meant to do this. I literally asked her yesterday if I meant to do this and she hand delivered a white rose. I could have been handed anything outside of the tunnel and I was handed a white rose, which is literally the last thing I ever gave my mom. Mm. So I'm like, that is the sign that I needed. That was it. And I remember from there just... You came home with such conviction and of course we we looked at it and we did our diligence and we were like, this is smart. Like this is an opportunity. This isn't a job, but it's an opportunity to change our lives by going outward and helping change other people's lives through health and wellness, through the products and through the business, whether that's financial or personal growth or finding community. And you just, I remember, took it and ran with it. Like actually, I'd love for you to share a little bit about the behind the scenes, like your first 90 days you were just in such momentum but you were on fire for life which was so attractive to me but i think for other people too i remember though i was like this is a great opportunity babe but it's for you because it was like all women right and i didn't see it for myself honestly when i think back on that time it was again one of those moments just like the moment i told you guys about the bus looking out the window Mm -hmm. When I think about that time of me starting my business, it was like a moment in time. Like something shifted in me where I realized like this is gonna be the vehicle that changes everything. Like this is your purpose. Like this is your calling. Like this is part of why you were put on this planet is to make a huge impact on people's lives through holistic health and wellness and empowering people that they too can change their circumstances. But you have to go first, right? So I had no idea what I was doing. I had no prior experience in network marketing, but I saw success and proof of other people that had done it. And I'm like, if these people can do it, like, why can't I do it? So I became a student of network marketing. During the day, I was working my real estate business. And then at night, literally from like nine till one in the morning, every night, I was reading network marketing books. I was researching the industry. I was listening to podcasts. I was reaching out to people. I was following up with people. I was making sample packs. I was planning events. I was like, literally my life was imbalanced and I worked a lot. You were obsessed. I was obsessed. It Mm -hmm. took over everything. Like I had friends accuse me like, you've changed. You know, you don't really make time for us anymore. It was true. I was changing. I was evolving. I was like this butterfly, like coming out of her cocoon that had finally found something that she was truly passionate about that made her feel so alive. My health had transformed so much through the 30 day program. And I loved the way that I felt like healthy living from the inside out that I'm like, wow, like if I could feel this good, I want to help other people feel this good. Like this is like how people are designed to feel. We've accepted, oh, I always have headaches. Oh, I always have cramps when I'm on my, on my period. I don't sleep well. I have eczema. I, I'm always bloated. I only go to the bathroom once a week, blah, blah, blah. All these things that we just think are normal. When I had solved those issues for myself, I felt so good that I was like, everyone deserves to feel this good and know that it is not normal to not feel good. And so literally it was like passion took over. Yeah. And I so, remember your day job, the, the commercial real estate. Yeah. She'd come home like drained from it just absolutely drained. But then she would light up when At you night. would start working your, your Arvon business. And I, I would wake up to like go to the bathroom at 1 a.m. or whatever, and sometimes she would be there, like either listening or reading or working or doing social media or whatever, you know, all those things it takes to build a business. Like yeah. you were doing them. I was obsessed. And you were passionate about it. And I think that that is so attractive. And the you also, that pain point, you like, kind of hated what you did in real estate and were really searching like for that impact and soul. passion. Yeah. So you just were on fire and just ran with it. Yeah. So, and I should like put this disclaimer in there. You know, our story isn't typical to learn what's typical. You can visit earnings.arbon.com. Yeah. Um, but my first month in business, my team and I did like 17,000 in sales, which is a good amount for like a new person. And then my second month, I think we did like 32,000 in sales. And then my fourth month, we did like... 70,000 in sales. And then my, my third month, yeah, was 70,000. Then my fourth month was 89,000 in sales. Like this just taking off, like just taking off. Like it was like explosive. And 
like looking back now, we've been in the business at the time of this recording for five years. Like I haven't seen anyone else do that yet. I didn't know at the time that that was like a big Rare. deal. I was just like, am I good enough? Like, am I doing enough? And now I look back and I'm like, wow, like it was incredible. Like the quantum leaps and just how we were growing and growing and growing. And so in our bond, there's four levels of management. And the way that we were growing, like month one, we ranked up to the first level. Month two, we ranked up to the second level. Month three, we ranked up to the third level. And we earned the monthly cash bonus towards a Mercedes Benz, which is our car bonus program that we have. So I was like just growing and growing and growing. And then it started duplicating and other people were starting to do it too. And so literally I am the example of the ordinary girl that decided to go for it. I just believed like if other people can do this, why can't I? I let passion take over. I worked really, really hard and just had a gritty like work ethic and put in so many hours and time and effort behind the scenes to build what has now built like a strong foundation for our life. Yeah, I remember I'm watching. I'm I'm working from home in my finance job. You're working from home or, you know, out on the road doing real estate stuff and then building your Arbonne business. And you built it to a point in those first three months. Again, Sandy's story, our story is not typical, but it does show it's possible. But worked it to a point where you were able to walk away from real estate and just focus on what you loved and your passion and that was Arbonne. And meanwhile, like I'm so inspired this whole time. I still don't see it for myself. It's mostly women, it's health and wellness, this network marketing opportunity. But I'm like, go Sandy, I'm her biggest cheerleader and I'm listening and hearing and absorbing everything. And I'm using the products and we're using it together. I remember in the beginning, she's like, do this 30 day program with me. And I'm like, okay, I love health. This is kind of how I live already. And she's like, but, we have to do it full out. And I was like, okay, how about if one of us mistakes or like slips up, we shave the other one's eyebrow off. And we were like, oh, we wanna keep our eyebrows. So we did it full out, we mm -hmm. felt good. And all of a sudden this healthy living program became a lifestyle. And it's easy to share something when it's authentic to you. It's easy to share your story and your testimonial. It's harder to go sell something you don't believe in or use. But when you believe in it and it, it has changed your life, it's much easier to share. And all of a sudden selling becomes more sharing. So I'm like watching her this whole time flourish into that butterfly she was talking about. And she's making an impact and she's helping people. And I started with my business coach actually coaching people in health and in business and in life. And I'm helping a few people a month. This is moonlighting after my long hours in the finance day. And I see her helping people in health and business and life and mindset but helping other people do what she did and leveraging herself and all of a sudden her impact went from a few to dozens to hundreds. Meanwhile, I'm helping like a few people a month, which is great, but she's all of a sudden directly and indirectly helping hundreds. Meanwhile, the whole time she goes, babe, do this with me. We could be like the couple, the power couple, young couple that does this together that shows other people what's possible. And she was already showing people what was possible herself. I was scared to death to join her, do you in business? because it was like 90 plus percent women. I'm coming from this finance career as a VP to go into health and wellness network marketing with like all women. I just was so scared to make that leap. But I, I was seeking everything I had to offer. I loved business, I loved health, I loved helping people, I wanted to make an impact, I wanted to grow as a leader in person and I wanted to work with Sandy this whole time. So it took me six months of her asking and me getting over my fears and what really changed it was the reason I was so scared to do it, I flipped it on its head and was like, this is the reason I have to do it. Whether someone resonates with my story, whether it's being a man, whether it's having a corporate or finance background, or just feeling like I don't fit in really with that culture. Like I'm a man, I'm a guy's guy, like I played football, I have my master's in, I'm in finance. This is like mostly women, but I thought, you know what, maybe my story could inspire someone. I've always wanted to work with Sandy and I love everything this business is doing for our life and many other people's lives. Let's do it. So six months in, I joined her and we create a vision together for our family because we wanted to live a life of lifestyle freedom. We wanted to travel the world. We wanted to start a family. We both wanted to be present parents and the current vehicle and finance I was in, I knew couldn't provide that lifestyle. It could provide a certain amount of income but I always had to go trade time for money there and I was always working for someone else and the amount of time freedom I had, it just wasn't there. And to go travel the world, the options weren't really there. And to be a present dad and father, I would be there for some of it, but I'd be away for a lot of it. And I wanted to be there for all the milestones. So 
we saw Arbon and network marketing as the vehicle to that life, to that beautiful life. And we realized early on, if we can help enough other people in their health or through this business, as a result, we'll be successful. So after a few months of kind of taking a breath from your initial sprint, we partnered together and we're like, okay, for me to leave my job, we've got to reach the top level of the company. So we set our sights on that and it was another period in our lives, a chapter of like drive and focus and blinders and Intensity. obsession really where I'm working a full day in finance. I would get up early and start work by 5 a.m. and I'd get off by three or four and we would go do events every night together pretty mm -hmm. much like five nights a week and we were just focused like how can we help people? How can we expand? How can we make a bigger impact? How can we reach the top level of the company? And we were just obsessed and I remember we were getting to this point together in our business where it was like there on the horizon, but like couldn't see the proof of it, right? And Sandy's always been someone who has vision, like didn't need to see it to believe it. She would believe it first. I, my finance numbers guy, rationale background is like, no, we need to see it. So I want to jump to, we're on a cruise. It's July of 2019 and we're, you know, we're on vacation with our family but naturally we're in this lifestyle business with Arbon, And we're kind of always talking about like, what's next for us? Who else can we help? You know, what's our goal? So we're talking about our goals. And we we've bring been up, in the business like just under a year. Just under it's been a 11 year. months since we've been in. Yeah. We're like ready for the next level. And um, yeah, it was- We're this, talking about it. Like when is the time we when were setting goals? When is the time we were setting goals? And this is a funny story. <laughs> there was a competition on the cruise ship like to enter people for like a lip, lip sync battle. So I entered Wade without him knowing. I didn't know. And of course he freaking crushed it and he won. <laughs> so because he won the lip sync battle, he was like famous on the cruise ship. Like everywhere we went, people were like, can I get a picture with you? <laughs> and so anyway, because he won the lip sync battle, we got like, we won this like free, like fancy steak dinner at their steakhouse on the cruise ship. So we're on this cruise ship and naturally like we're talking about goals and work and life. Our vision for a life. Yeah. yeah. And so I'm like, babe, I think we can do this. Like we, I know we need to double our business, but we can do this. Like let's do it this month. Let's promote to the top of the company. Yeah. And I remember being like Th this month you want to double our business. Cause I'm a businessman, business brain, like business is usually linear. Our bond and network marketing doesn't really deal with linear. It can be explosive. It can happen like crazy like that. And I'm like, you want, and I didn't know that then. I didn't experience that yet. And I'm like, you want to double our business overnight? Like we were doing probably 80,000 a month in team sales and we needed to do 160 to open up qualification for the top level. I'm like, babe, we can't just often double our business. What would need to happen? This, this, that. And she's like, oh, what? It doesn't matter how it happens. Like if we, we have to believe it's going to happen and go work for it and like let the chips fall. And I'm like, no, and we're, we're at the point where we're fighting about mm, this. We're fighting. Cause Sandy's a, a dreamer visionary and I'm like grounded rationale and those that mix serves us really well, but we can get in fights about it too. And she's helped me become more visionary. And I think I've helped ground her at times, but she kind of, she's just the visionary of the family, but I'm like, how do you expect that to happen? That's not going to happen. She goes, I don't know, magic. I don't know how it's going to happen. I kid you not. A man in all black walks over to our dinner table. Like and two minutes later. He's yeah. a magician. And he goes, do you believe in magic to me? He didn't hear our conversation. This is just another sign in life, right? Life whispers at you. And I'm like, um, yeah, yeah, I, now I do. And he takes a half dollar and he goes and he just snaps behind my ear and it turns into a dollar coin. And he I'm like, doubled, what more do you need? Double the value of this money, right? Of this coin. We needed to double our business to reach our goal, the top level. And he said, do you believe in magic? At that point, I was like, I need to let my guard down and just trust Sandy and believe in this because we need to be aligned in business together. Big yep. thing we've realized in business, we need to be in alignment. Otherwise, we aren't going to make progress like we want to. And so from that point, I released the how and was just working on having blind faith and working towards it. Did we hit the goal that month? No, we didn't. The next month? No, we didn't. But were we working towards it? Mm -hmm. And what happened the month after? We got into qualification, which like opens level. the doors. Yeah. yeah. And then we went for it for three months in a row. You have like three months to do it. And, and we fell short and we didn't close it. And it was like, 
Everyone thought we were going to do biggest, it. The biggest like blow to my ego. And I look back on it and I'm so grateful it happened. Yeah, everyone thought we were going to do it. And they're like, oh, of course they're going to do it. And like we have all this momentum. And amidst all this momentum, actually, I'm still working full time in my finance job during the day. And then we're, you're working the business kind of all day. I'm then at night coming in. Mm -hmm. And it was a point in my life where at one time I was grateful for both incomes right and both opportunities and then i stopped being grateful for my finance job and i was like oh, i just want to work our arbum business and amidst that time i swear when you stop being grateful for something you lose it right and so i was writing my way out i was telling them i'm gonna leave i'm gonna work on this entrepreneurial endeavor with arbon they knew this i was writing my ticket out but i got comfortable with both and amongst that we did a kind of marketing video. We did an opportunity video for Arbon, and it was super passionate and Sandy put it on LinkedIn. And I didn't know how LinkedIn worked, but she goes, babe, will you like it so more people will see? And I said, sure, and I like it. And <laughs> it blows out to my whole finance network. So my whole company, all of our investors, our lawyers, Wall Street, our investment bankers, all of those people. And the next day, it's actually a Monday, I get a call and they're like, wait, uh, this is on record. This is HR. Um, we need to terminate you immediately. And I'm like, whoa, whoa, what's happening? We are a small company. I'm like, you guys knew about this, et cetera. They're like, we saw the video and it's funny how it all worked. And they're like, all right, off the record. They're like, yeah, what the heck, man? Like all our investors saw that. They're like, what? Your VP's doing, how is he doing both? Anyways, long story short, I get fired. And eventually they're like, oh, we get it, but we still have to fire you because all our investors saw it. Now our back's against the wall, where we go from a two to a one income family, and while we were making good money, it wasn't, you know, it was this drop off, right? And we're living in Orange County. And then financially our back's against the wall, and we were like, oh my gosh, it's go time. So we push, because we needed it for us. We push, push, push the next three months, because we wanted to get to the top to support our family, and because we wanted to be at the leadership retreat in Maui at year's end and we didn't do it, we fell short. And we actually, someone who had joined our business did it before us, so she passed us. So everyone's watching, this is public on social media. I'm fired, we didn't hit it, we fell short. Someone on our team did it before us who started after us, and we're just like kind of crushed. Come here, baby. Oh, and our daughter's up. And she's <laughs> gonna be probably in the video at some point, but right now she wants to go play. <laughs> um, but yeah, how'd you feel waking up like this is December 2019, just like we're or January 1st, 2019. We're not in Maui. We didn't do it. Yeah, it was a really crappy feeling <clears throat> for like two weeks. I felt super bad for myself and I just felt so embarrassed and like we put ourselves out there and we didn't do that, do it. And um, we've had a lot of highs and lows in our business. We've had a lot like business ebbs and flows. It just happens. Um, I'm really grateful for it now, mm -hmm. but it was really hard at the time. Yeah, we, looking back, coming back to things often don't make sense in the very moment, but when you step back and you look bigger picture and you start to think like, how is life happening for me right now instead of happening to me? Oftentimes our problems, our things in our life are an opportunity to learn something. Life is teaching us something. And in that moment, it took us a bit to realize it, but we come out of it and we're like, gosh, we've been so self-absorbed we've mm -hmm. been wanting to go to the top of the company which you can't do alone you have to do by helping other people you have to do by building a team and you have to do by stacking up a lot of success you know and then as a result you promote to the top of the company so we're like gosh we've been doing this for us we needed the income we wanted to be in maui it was a pure ego thing we need to just focus on everyone else like let's just focus on them and we'll release the timeline and we know we'll go to the top of the company, but let's make it about everyone else and helping others. So we kind of shifted the focus from inward to outward. And we opened up team reports and like looked at like hundreds of teammates and had those conversations of like, okay, what are your goals? How much money do you want to make this month or in the coming months? What are you going for in terms of like a title or are you going for an incentive trip or blah, blah, blah. And we made everyone else's goals our goals and we just became obsessed with helping everyone hit what, they, what success looked like to them. And when we did that, then it did happen eventually. Yeah. Literally then the next month, we went into qualification again. And then the month after, 
we blew past, we closed out, we hit the top level of the company early in the month and it was amazing because so many people were leveling up around us. Mm -hmm. We were so focused on the fruits of our labor and everyone else that it just happened, we just happened to go to the top. And it was really cool to see because it's cool to promote or do something for yourself. We've realized it's cooler to help other people do it. And if we can help enough other people, we know we'll, we'll you know, be successful in, in whatever it is. And so <clears throat> everyone's leveling up and all the things and there's so much momentum in our life and business. And so we reached the top level and that was, gosh, <clears throat> as of the time of this recording, that was in 2020, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, February, 2020. And so as of this recording, that was a little over three years ago. And it's just been such an amazing journey since then because that's really just the beginning. That's the start. You've made a big impact, but you're like, gosh, it's my duty and responsibility to grow my impact and help other people grow theirs and raise leaders in the world's world. <clears throat> so that's been our focus. And in that time, yeah, we, we were married. We started a family. We had our daughter, Cameron, who hopefully she makes an appearance if she is done playing and she'll come over at some point. Um, but it opened up so many doors for us. I think network marketing and Arbon for us was turnkey entrepreneurship. And it, I know for me, it exploded my vision for what we could do in life together. All of a sudden we were aligned. We're aligned on our <clears throat> vision for our life, on our goals, on what we wanna do, on where we wanna travel, on who we wanna help, on the family we wanna build, on the values we wanna bring into our home. And it's helped us do other things like start a podcast. Um, we started an Amazon business with a sales journal that helped other people, other direct sellers and network marketers. Um, We've since sold that. We started, I wanted to stay in finance. Cam, come here. Can no. I see Bear? Oh no, she's not ready yet. I wanted to start, Mommy. I wanted to keep my finance muscles strong. And so we started an investment company with some of our friends and we invest in real estate and venture capital. And we use kind of our network marketing and Arbonne is our main thing, but it's opened up all these other doors. I started a um, passion project, a, a brand called Big Dad Energy that's starting with dad swag, but empowering proud fathers. And so it's been the gateway for us to expand our impact, our reach, our network, and really just help people. And it's, it's been amazing. It sure has. Yeah. What do you think? Like, how do you think about, so now we're here, like vision for the future and who you want to help and who specifically, you know, if someone's watching this that you want to help. I think of people that were where I was at that like know that they're made for more that want to make a difference, that know that they're meant to help others and make a big impact, but they just don't know how, and they need the coaching and the mentorship and the leadership, like there's a place for you here. Um, you don't have to be passionate about selling products or feel like, oh, I'm not a good salesperson or I don't have a big social media. Like I hear all these sorts of limiting beliefs and hesitations. I'm not a salesperson. I did not have a big social media when I started this. I also did not consider myself a salesperson, but I do consider myself an authentic, uh, you know, heart led person. And if you go through the program and like the 30 days of healthy living or the products or whatever, change your life, it's so authentic for us to teach you how to be an ambassador or an affiliate with us so that you can start building this business alongside your life too. And you know, most people that build this, like, especially when they start, they're doing it alongside a full-time career. Um, or maybe they're in school or maybe they're raising kids. Like busy people are best at this. But yeah, I would say like, if you feel like life is kind of mediocre or like boring, or you're just kind of going through the motions and anytime someone asks you what's new, you're like, nothing. And you're just kind of getting sick of that answer. Like, I know what that feels like. I've been there. Life doesn't have to be that way. Life can be exciting. Life can be abundant. Life can be full of adventures and traveling. And you can be the family that has it all, that you know has the balance of being present parents. Um, and also like, does work that fills your heart, that makes you feel super passionate and fulfilled um, and travels a lot and just makes a big impact. Yeah. What would, I think last question I think about is like, what would you say, you know, we've been in Arbonne for five years now as of the time of this recording, but what would you say finances aside, but Arbonne has given you or us or our lifestyle? It's given me confidence. Like honestly, five years ago, I didn't believe in myself. Like I didn't think I was good enough, smart enough, capable enough, worthy enough, basically keyword enough of anything to really 
ever make an impact or you know I had kind of accepted like oh Wade will always make more money than me like I you know I was never really good at school like I've never really found my passion I'll never really like I just was kind of like had settled in like the like I'm just kind of like an average person um and what it's really helped me like I guess overcome or what I've blossomed into is believing in myself that like I am a leader worth following and I can do anything like there's nothing that's too big for me it's really, I guess, like taught me how to dream. Mm -hmm. I think, yeah, for me, I'd echo the same thing, but I think for me, yeah, it taught me how to dream, give me a vision. Like the glass ceiling I had for my life has exploded. Like I really think who you become in the process, in entrepreneurship, in network marketing, in Arbonne to be specific, who you become is everything. Because money aside, like the person you become, the mm -hmm. leader you become, the skills you learn. Like you learn people, you learn leadership, you learn sales, you learn marketing, it's transferable anywhere. But the confidence to go out and go for things, to go for, for your dreams, but also just the lifestyle. Like I'm so grateful because our daughter's right behind the camera, but just playing and she's 18 months right now. And we have one on the way. and. I feel so blessed I get to be a present father home and we get to work this business from home or around the world or anywhere and bring our family with us and also show our children what's possible. And here she comes. Kim, you want to join me? Come here. Come to Dada. <laughs> Come on to Dada. Did you hear me talking about you? Oh, thank you. Is that the puzzle? No. no. Oh, no. You don't want... Oh, no. Oh, wow. And this is our daughter, Cameron, Cameron North. And we have her little brother or no. sister on the way. No. You want to go keep playing? <laughs> but I'm so grateful no. that I get to be a present. That we're father. raising an independent woman. And we're raising an independent woman. <laughs> and she gets to watch us go after our dreams and help people and make a difference and not willing to settle. And I'm just grateful. And I think, yeah, who we're looking for is other, other people just like that. Just wanting more out of life, wanting to express their self or their gifts or wanting to make an impact or wanting a change or wanting not to settle for something they aren't passionate about. So I think that's it. I think this, the vision for the future is just to keep helping people and expanding and increasing our impact by helping you increase yours. Yeah, yeah. And uh, probably more, more babies in the future, we'll see, but that, that's in the future. And that's kind of a, a high level on us. I'm, I'm grateful for you and I'm excited to do life with you. I think that's a wrap. <laughs>